So I'd like to do a little video. This video is going to be focusing on the eye anatomy and terminology. It should complement some paperwork that you would have in a training manual and you can go through it within that manual. So the eye is a very complex structure. As you can see, there's a lot of parts. There's a lot of things that are going on in the eyeball uh, to make up uh, the process of what it works. Throughout this presentation and through some of the other training and your experience within our office, you'll get to learn more about these uh, parts of the eye. So let's start with the very front. The eyelid is a thin fold of skin that covers and protects the eye. The pupil is actually a small hole that is located in the central of the iris. The sclera is the white part of the eye. Uh, it's opaque and it's a protective outer layer. The iris is uh, what surrounds the pupil. It's colored and it's responsible for controlling the diameter and pupil, uh, thus uh, uh, affecting the amount of light that gets in. The conjunctiva is a, uh, a thin layer of uh, mucus type tissue that overlies the sclera and the cornea is the outermost layer of the uh, front of the eye uh, that covers the iris. The ciliary body is this area right here, the circum, uh, circumferential tissue inside the eye. It produces the aqueous humor, which lies uh, is the fluid of the inside of the eye. The vitreous humor is uh, on the on the outer, uh, the more posterior component of the eye. It's a clear gel that fills this space. The aqueous is a transparent fluid uh, that fills um, the anterior and posterior chambers, uh, and particularly between the lens and the cornea. The choroid is this, uh, this uh, vascular layer of the eye um, that supplies all the blood vessels and blood supplies for the uh, outer sclera and the inner retina. The retina is a layer of light sensitive tissue uh, that gives the rods and the cones and so forth. Within the retina, or the retina itself, we've got an area in the back of the eye that's called the macula. It's oval shaped and it's pigmented, um, and it in the center of it is the fovea, which is a small pit, uh, and it's where the most highly inter highly packed cones are for the eye, and cones pick up color. In the back of the eye, we have the optic nerve. The optic nerve is uh, it, it, it transmit the visual information from the brain to the retina, and the optic disc is what we would see here, um, uh, and it's the point of exit for all of the ganglion cell axons that leave the eye. There's no rods or cones overlying the disc, and so thus it gives a physiological blind spot. The very front of the eye, we have the cornea, and then in front of that, we have a mucin-like layer of our tear film, then an aqueous layer, and then a lipid layer of the tear film. Terms or abbreviation, uh, when we talk about the right eye, it's the OD, the dexter, the OS is the sinister, left and both eyes together is OU. Uh, one way to remember that the left eye is OS is uh, in olden days um, you used to get slapped if you used your left hand because it was a sin um, and so that's where the sinister comes from. If we're talking about the, the parts of the eye, we may indicate that it is nasal or temporal. Anything towards the nose is nasal. If it's towards the temple or the outer part, it is temporal. Inferior is down, posterior is back, anterior is front, and obviously superior is up. Patients sometimes complain of flashes and floaters. Uh, when the retina is being tugged, uh, it, may it may give a patient some sort of light sensation that we would call flashes. Uh, if they have, have floaters, it's because there's dark moving pieces of the vitreous, and uh, it's not a problem to have floaters, uh, but if there is tugging of the retina, we certainly would want to see that patient right away. 
When it comes to contact lenses in our office, we use some interesting terms. A dispensing appointment is where the doctor needs to see the patient to review the prescription. So if I dispense some contact lenses to the patient uh, or want a dispense appointment, we need to see them for that. A follow-up is when we've already seen the patient or we've given the patient the contact lenses and we want to see them back after they've worn the item. RTC is a medical term for return to clinic. A DFE is a dilated fundus exam where we would put drops in and dilate the patient's eyes. Sometimes we'll say that there's no dispense needed indicating that the patient can get the glasses or contact lenses without seeing the doctor. GL in our office means glasses. CL means contact lenses. RGP or GP means rigid gas permeable or gas permeable indicating a hard contact lens. Uh, we talk about sleep shaping lenses in our office as the lenses that people use at nighttime to reshape the surface of their eye. We use a brand name that's called CRT, so you may hear of CRT or sleep shaping to indicate that. A refraction is the measurement that is used to obtain the patient's prescription, uh, and this is a refractor or a foropter. PT indicates patient, RX is prescription, VAs are visual acuities, and NVAs are near visual acuities. PD indicates the pupillary distance and the distance between a patient's eyes. A single vision is a lens with one focus. If a patient needs additional focus to help them with their up close, we'll give them an add. Base curve indicates the curvature of a lens or a contact lens, and a bifocal is a spectacle lens in which one area has more power than the other. Trifocal is three different add powers, or three different corrections, two add powers and one distance. Multifocal is a lens that is designed to provide correction for more, uh, for two or more viewing ranges, and a progressive provides correction for more than one viewing range in which the power changes continuously rather than distinctly like a bifocal. Intermediate is what we would refer to as the vision uh, such as 30 inches away, which is about where a computer would be. When we look at a patient's prescription, the spherical component is the uh, first number that we would look at. The toric component would be the cylinder. The axis indicates the location of the cylinder. And this would be how we would indicate base curve. Oftentimes they're indicated as a 82, 85, 92. So it's a smaller number like that. And diameter would indicate uh, something around a 13.5 to a 15, 16, 17. Lensometry is an instrument that's used to determine the vertex power axis location, optical center, and major reference points, and prism power given to a lens. If we indicate that something is a plano power, it means it's zero. Prism is a wedge-shaped lens that shifts the image from their normal viewing plane. Like this person right here, she's able to look straight up, but the prism shifts the image so that she can see something that's uh, right in front of her. Reading a prescription for a patient, that first number is the spherical, then the cylinder, then the axis, and that indicates the astigmatism power and location, and the add power. A spherical power describes if a person is myopic or hyperopic. The cylinder tells us whether or not they have astigmatism. The axis is where the astigmatism is at, and it describes the shape of a person's eye. The power describes the amount of presbyopic correction that a patient ha has and is usually seen in a progressive or bifocal or multifocal contact lens. The term myopia, hyperopia, and presbyopia indicate whether a person is nearsighted, can't see in the distance, farsighted, can't see up close, or the inability to see at multiple distances with presbyopia. Some common conditions like blepharitis is when there's inflammation of the eyelids and it could cause an excess of bacteria to grow on the eyelid surface. An abrasion of the cornea is when there's a scratch of some sort, and if we put dye in, we can see sometimes a pattern that might be of that abrasion. A sty or a chalazion, a sty is an infection that causes a tender bump. If that, if that sty sticks around for too long, it can become very, very hard, and then maybe not even painful anymore, um, and it can you know, be a little bit of an eyesore, uh, no pun intended. 
Dry eye and MGD, these are types of dry eye conditions that patients have where um, various different components of their tear film are not there like they should be. Um, and we'll go into this more in detail in other videos. Glaucoma is a condition that causes damage to the optic nerve. It can get worse over time. Uh, oftentimes it's associated with buildup and pressure in the eye, although not always. If damage to the nerve uh, is there, it can cause permanent vision loss. Cataracts are a clouding in the central lens of the patient's eyes. Macular degeneration is where there's debris that builds up in a patient's eye. Uh, we call that drusen, and over time that can become quite damaging or quite effective to the patient, and it could become blinding. Conjunctivitis is when there's some sort of inflammation, whether it's because of a bacterial, inflammatory, or a viral infection to the conjunctiva. Keratoconus is a condition that causes a, a malformation of the cornea and it's shaped in an irregular pattern. Pterygium is a, uh, is, is a tissue-like uh, condition where it's almost like a callus forms onto the cornea. It's painful and it doesn't go away. You can do surgery to remove it and it's generally caused by excessive UV damage. Veruca are uh, little tiny skin tags or viral warts that can uh, come up on a patient's eyes. They uh, can last for years and they can grow in size and number. So here is a uh, diagram of a patient's eye. Um, we'll walk through these together and then I'd encourage you to do it on your own. This uh, innermost lying here is the retina. This is the vascular supply of the retina and the sclera. It's called the choroid. This is the central retina called the fovea or the macula. This is the optic nerve with various different blood vessels in it. This is the gelatinous tissue of the eye called the vitreous. This is the crystalline lens. This is filled with aqueous fluid that is made by the ciliary body, and then this is the cornea. Hope you enjoyed your anatomy lesson of the day.